Well, I thought the uh, audience interaction was great, and it seemed like um, a lot of the questions centered around how do you deal with uncertainty, and there were some conversations about that, and then how do you convey this uh, to decision makers? So I think a couple of things. I mean, one is there's plenty of examples where companies have not factored in uncertainty, and it resulted in a lot of value destruction. I, I talked about the Iridium example, which I'm very familiar with because I was in the space industry, um, where the world changed so dramatically over the 10 years from the investment decision to the time it was actually reaching the market um, that it, was, it would have been a loser, right, if it, had, if it had known that in between. So if they just thought about a broader set of scenarios and maybe monitored the world along the way, so it's really both scenarios plus monitoring factored back into your portfolio of investments. If you can do those two things, whether you do it as a dialogue or whether you do it in a structured model, uh, it can be really valuable. In terms of how you convey it to decision makers, you ultimately have to tie this to the things they care about, which are financial returns, and that's the hard part. So you really have to think of scenarios as creating the 90% cone of what's possible, but then you've got to bring that back to a set of assumptions in your financial models to say, how's this going to change our investments in terms of payoff or loss, and then eventually make those decisions. Because if you just keep it at the abstract level, then decision makers aren't going to really care about it. So it's too academic. That's a great question. Um, and I think they are kind of different skill sets or different approaches. But you can leverage some, some of the same tools. In fact, scenarios can be used uh, as a way to change your frame. Uh, get out of your current mental model and explore worlds you've never thought of before. And in doing that, um, start to connect dots about what innovations might be possible in those new scenarios. So, um, so by thinking about and exploring futures that are different than the ones you think are going to happen, you can stimulate new innovations and think about things that might go into your portfolio to succeed in those different futures. So if the world, all of a sudden, if the grid collapses and all of a sudden we have microgrids blooming in households and communities, you could imagine storage technologies being really important or uh, rooftop solar and wind and compact type uh, generation. And also mini controllers for consumers that show up on their PCs or their iPhones so they can manage their energy. If that future came, those companies are going to do really well, right? So um, thinking about what kind of innovations might uh, succeed. Then on the managing side, once you've got your portfolio, using it as a stress test to make sure you're not driving off a cliff like Iridium on some of your investments and that you've got enough hedges in there to make sure that if the, the winds shift that you can still profit. And uh, I think that's the, the management side is more of a, uh, future proofing or stress testing your portfolio. So 